the Monroe Review, where it's all about connecting, sharing, and valuing the arts in the central San Joaquin Valley. I'm Donald Monroe. Today is October 26, and we're going to be talking about November's busy art scene. In just a few minutes, you'll get to meet two guests. Thomas Woodellis is from Fresno State, and he's going to be talking about the new play he's directing, Native Son. And Tony Carranza is here from Fresco, a downtown art gallery and creative space. He'll talk to us about Art Hop. But first, let's recap some of what I've been covering on MonroeReview.com. I don't have any long-running local theater productions to review for you this month, except to give another plug for good company players' wonderful The Drowsy Chaperone, which continues through November 12th. But I will tell you about several prominent shows I saw that have already closed. I got the most excited about the Fresno City College production of American Idiot, which we featured on this program last month. The Broadway adaptation of the famous Green Day album boasted plenty of grit and angst in a punk rock tale of generational disaffection. Its characters fight for a chance to make a difference in a country that is embroiled in two wars, in Iraq and Afghanistan. They're upset about income inequality, and there's lots of alcohol and drug abuse. But there was also a sense of levity in this production, of fun, of getting down to a primal level and having a stomping good couple of hours in the theater. Shout outs to performances by Josh Tabor, Aaron Pierce, Marissa Sanchez, Bri Villanueva, Marcus Cardenas, Jana Price, and Dylan Hardcastle. And the creative team was first rate, from Christina McCollum's decaying rust belt feel of a set and throbbing lighting design, to Austin Dozier's dazzling projections all around a real triumph for Fresno City's theater department. I had fun at Stageworks Fresno's production of Little Shop of Horrors. This was a chance for Abigail Nolte, a longtime theater veteran, to really make an impression as Audrey, the slightly dingy flower shop assistant who gets to sing that wonderful song, Somewhere That's Green and I loved her rendition of it. The three street urchins that are sort of the Greek chorus in the show were played with a doo-wop charm by Kendall Cowger, Caitlin Lopez, and Mackenzie Stafford. And you can't forget the man-eating plant, Audrey II, sung with style by Will Bishop. Now, if you wanna have a fun and very offbeat reading experience, check out my Advance for a Little Shop, which is still online, in which I interview the plant itself with Bishop and Logan Cooley pretending to be a cranky plant actor. Only on MonroeReview.com. A few other things you may, might have missed. I was able to review Ray Hoteda's inaugural performance as the Fresno Philharmonic's new music director. This was a concert few people will forget. She opened the program with a rather daring contemporary piece titled New Era Dance that signaled her intention to keep this orchestra firmly in a new century alongside playing the classics. I loved the way she ended the concert with a dramatic stance. Her left arm was raised high in a power salute with her baton pointed skyward. Her other arm was at rest by her side, creating an elegant asymmetry. It was a graceful yet assertive posture to end on, a, a follow me pose as if to say, I'm here to lead you to great things and I'm gonna do it in style. A few other tidbits. Fresno will soon be saying farewell to one of its biggest art supporters. Amy Kareen will be leaving in December. She founded the Fresno Dance Collective, or NOCO, and was a tireless advocate for the arts of all kinds in the Fresno area. She's moving to Chicago to pursue new endeavors and will miss her. My interview with her announcing her departure was one of my best read stories last month on the Monroe Review. I got a chance to experience the new Fulton Street at the big opening party. And I got to do so with Joyce Aiken, one of the original artists who contributed to the Fulton Mall more than 50 years ago. She and I were both impressed at how nicely the art has been cleaned up and preserved, including her own mosaic benches. Now we're both just crossing our fingers. The city will continue to think, keep things looking tidy. And in another very well-read story, Children's Musical Theater Works is going to have to find a new place to perform, and if they can't find one, the company might have to close. That comes as the city of Fresno announces that Veterans Memorial Auditorium needs extensive safety repairs, and the budget won't allow for fixes. This is an ongoing story, I believe, and we'll see if CMT is able to rally the community to get some answers about what's next. I'll keep you posted. Now let's move on to meet our guests. I'm joined today 
First by Fresno State's Thomas Wood Ellis, a longtime director and faculty member there. He's here to talk about the intriguing new adaptation of Natus Sun. First, we're gonna check out a video clip. Welcome, Thomas. Thank you for, for being here with us today. I know this is a really busy time <laughs> for yes, you. Thank you. Thank you uh, for we, having me. We just saw some, um, some really interesting footage there. Yes, we did. Uh, Native Sun is well known by a lot of people because we had to read it in school. Yes. Yeah. But people, there are a lot of people out there who don't know about it as well. Can you just kind of give us a, a quick recap? Well, first of all, I, I'm glad I saw this clip because I, I saw a couple of directing things I need to fix okay. tonight. <laughs> so you're very, I'm very thankful for this that. This afternoon paid off for you. Then. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, um, Native Son is, has been required reading in uh, advanced placement classes, English classes and, and college courses for many years. I don't know exactly where that is now in 2017, but uh, it's certainly um, a book that I've grown up with and uh, the movie, uh, Oprah Winfrey did a, a film uh, back in the 80s. And uh, the reason that I picked this show though is because it's a new adaptation. Uh, Richard Wright wrote a stage play and then I think there was another stage play done by somebody else, but this is Nambi uh, Kelly's uh, rendition of the, of the novel. It's very fast, it's very hard hitting. It has all the, the elements boiled down to, you know, uh, heavy duty points that we uh, will walk away thinking and talking about. So you described it as almost a, like a series of, of vignettes, Sketches, yeah. but it still follows that native sun. Still follows the, uh, the plot line um, rather seamlessly. Uh, and it just, I think it punches them up. If, if you didn't know the book, in the book, you know, it's just much more t a detail as all novels are. Uh, this would give you a very strong indication of what's going on, who the principal players are, um, you know, what the plot is, what drives the plot, what's going on in Bigger's head. Bigger Thomas is the, the, the uh, protagonist that, whose world happens to cave in on him after the first five minutes of the play. And a very complicated protagonist at that. Yes, exactly. You feel very conflicted as you're, as you're Ex taking this journey with him. Exactly, this play uh, really en encapsulizes, I think, um, the, the plight of most African Americans in that they live in a dual reality. The reality that in which they see themselves and also the reality in which they're seen principally by white America. And um, a lot of African Americans, even today, 2017, have to write, you know, walk that tightrope. And uh, in some cases, uh, it leads to, you know, mental dysfunction, really, because it's very difficult. Now, that's one of the themes that you're very interested in with this play, the idea of mental illness. Um, wh what do you hope audiences take away? Well, I, you know, from a, I don't mean to get clinical, but from that clinical standpoint, we see a person that is suffering uh, from, you know, psychological difficulty, but it goes untreated. And we, you know, when you look at, clinicians and doctors and, and everyone that works in, in that field, everyone says the same thing. Prevention, prevention, prevention. Everybody wants to, if you could just could have come in six months earlier, if you, we could cut this in, if we could have caught this, caught this in time. And, and that's, we see the beginning of something that probably could have been deflected to something else, but it's not. And it just spins out of control. Now, 
you are, are known for your admiration of the method mm -hmm. acting system. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you're, you're doing something, you, you've done something in the rehearsal process for this cool. show that could be considered a little controversial. Tell us about that. Uh, I think a lot of directors uh, that adhere to, uh, and, and actors that, that uh, really follow that method acting, that Stanislavski based uh, work, they tend to be misunderstood. And uh, so I'm kind of used to this. But in a sense, what I'm trying to do is, is create an actor environment so that when the actors are off stage, they're still feeling uh, and experiencing a lot of the material that's necessary for their on stage performances. So there's a kind of a seamless transition from slightly off stage to being on stage. Uh, it's, I'll put it another way. It's the same thing that football players you know, go through. When they're in that locker room, 10 minutes before they have to go out on the field, they are in a zone. They're thinking about nothing except their role on that team and what they have to do and their assignments. And uh, the only thing about this is that this method business, it predates football. So uh, we were doing this a long time before athletics was doing it. So it's the same thing. We do it in so many other walks of life uh, that it's, it, should be, um, it shouldn't be that big of a problem. But, you know, it's, it's controversial for me to do that. Yeah. And in terms of, I, I'm separating the cast. You are separating the cast. Yes. So you're, you're black. The black cast actors members are in, in one, and they're sitting the in one part of the stage during rehearsal, and now they're in one dressing room. The white actors are in another dressing room, and they're, so they're segregated. Okay, okay. Well, it yeah. sounds um, like it's a really uh, powerful and impactful production. I hope so. Now, when this show airs, we're actually going to be in the second week uh, of yes. your run. Tell us, uh, wh how, how long does it run for? What's the uh, this runs, this closes on November 4th, which is a Saturday. Okay. Uh, we uh, play every night this week. Um, uh, the curtain is at 7.30. Okay. The show is selling very well, so people that are interested, Good. they need to And that's get in the, the smaller theater, the John. It's in the, uh, the, or the, uh, the Woods. Uh, the, the Woods Theater. Yeah. Yeah. And it's full arena, so this isn't uh, like a typical theater experience. The audience is on all four sides for this one. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Thomas. Thank it you. sounds like a fascinating show. Thank you. Uh, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be back with Tony Carranza from Fresco. <laughs> Welcome back to the Monroe Review. Our next guest comes from the world of visual arts. Tony Carranza is here from Fresco, a grassroots space for cultural workers, movement builders, entrepreneurs, and artists. Welcome, Tony. Thank you. Now, I have been to your space. It's a, a vibrant, uh, creative place, very bright, lots of color, lots of, lots of energy. Um, tell us a little bit about Fresco, and when did it start, and how did it come to being? Yeah, we, uh, we've only been around for about a year. 
and we've um, you know we've done a lot of work to the place and and getting it to the way we want it um, to show you know um, art and do w workshops and you know do other um, you know film screenings and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but it started a year ago, and we originally started with five members. Uh, I'm not the only one that helps run it, um, and uh, you know two of our members have since left to pursue other things, uh, and uh, now there's three of us, and we you know we all kind of handle the duties of like booking stuff and um, you know getting you know I, I do all the curation in there we we do uh, you know somebody who takes care of the workshops and and you know we do a lot of uh, you know activities but as far as some of the um, nonprofits that we work with as well well I know that you brought a couple pictures to show us so yeah. we're gonna roll those and and let you talk a little bit about that now it's more than just a gallery right it's it's a you, you do projects your programming yeah yeah we're kind of in the middle of uh, figuring out if we want to be a nonprofit or not or if we want to be kind of an independent space the way we are now um, but we yeah we have um, we have you know bands that come through um, you know we we, we kind of curate that with uh, my other group which is called Dulce Up Front we do um, a lot of kind of community events um, so we have a stage where we have um, where we can have um, musicians and and poets and, and we've done a lot of that um, as I mentioned, the, the art is usually curated by myself, uh, and we do that every month for Art Hop. Uh, matter of fact, today um, we, are, we have an um, a artist talk that we have okay. with our, our current okay. artist. Um, uh, uh, his name is Josue Rojas. He's from the Bay Area. He's actually on the way in right now to, okay. to do the talk. Uh, and so that show will be gone by the time this airs. Right, that's going to be gone. Um, but um, you know, we're, we're getting ready. Uh, you showed the promotion for that. We're in the middle of doing our Dia de los Muertos, um, which is going to be uh, Earth, Wind, Fire, Water. Um, it's going to be kind of dedicated to uh, you know, a lot of the, the things that have happened in the, in, uh, recent, you know, recently with you know, the hurricanes and the the flooding and the fires and you know it kind of fits into the to this thing where we kind of want to honor some of the people who've passed with uh, a kind of community altar which we're going to be doing on the storefronts um, uh, underneath our space okay. um, and another thing that we're going to be doing is uh, honoring uh, one of our friends which um, this month will be a year that she passed uh, Mia Barraza yes, um, yes. which we were um, the name uh, the, the whole gallery is dedicated to her um, she was, you know, somebody who, who was very tied in with, with all our, um, all the people um, that helped found the place, and um, you know, where it's going to be a community altar. Um, we are going to curate it, but we're going to leave an area for public participation for okay. that. Okay. Uh, and that er that altar will be called the uh, the community uh, medicine altar. Her poet, uh, she was a, a local poet. The, um, her po poet name was uh, Mia Medicine, so we we're kind of dedicating it to her like that. So with the opening of Fulton Street, and mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're in a, a nice, close location to that, do you think that's going to increase foot traffic, increase sort of the circulation in that part of downtown? Um, I don't know. I, I, I think it could. Um, I, I, I kind of feel like some, what we're doing is a little bit off the beaten path. Um, and we're, we, you know, a lot of the things we do are very, very community oriented. Mm -hmm. um, matter of fact, you know, one of the, one of the reasons we kind of wanted to be there um, was a little bit strategic, uh, at least in my part, where, you know, we kind of knew that a lot of people were going to be displaced and we wanted to be kind of be kind of um, a place where, you know, we might uh, need to help in some way as, we, as far as uh, community activism or, or things like that. You know, okay. we, um, you know, as of now, as things, seem to be you know pretty good you know like as you mentioned earlier that the art got preserved and mm -hmm. and, and uh, people are are enjoying it um, you know but we uh, our focus is is a is a is a very community oriented one where we're we we encourage people to kind of like speak out and and uh, you know e everything that we do with the art um, and the the community involvement the workshops everything is kind of to educate people to um, to to kind of shed light on things that people, you know, injustices, the things that are happening not only in the community, but, you know, uh, nationwide, you know, internationally. Um, we really kind of have a, have a, you know, kind of world focus as mm -hmm. well, where we mm -hmm. try to um, do that. Um, and at, at least I try to do that with the art that I try to bring. Um, you know, a lot of the artists that, that come as of now uh, are mainly California artists, but that will change.
So for Art Hop, for the first Thursday in November, it's you're going to have kind of a collaborative show. Is that the case? Yeah, um, this is one of the first ones. Uh, um, you know, the the original kind of um, vision for it was that I wanted to really just do Art Hop every month with kind of a featured artist to kind of like get the ball rolling and let people know like we're here, um, we're 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 an art venue. Uh, so now you know, let people kind of know that we're at where we're at a little bit. Uh, you know, I really want to do more collaborative things and group shows and things like that. So this one was is going to be like that, where we have uh, multiple artists working on on different parts of it. Um, in the main gallery, um, we're going to have probably around five people working on that, and, and not including people that we're going to invite via social media to to contribute to the altar. Um, on the storefront area, we have um, uh, Caleb Duarte, which is a local artist who's done a lot of stuff in in uh, Mexico and uh, in the Bay Area. He kind of does a lot of um, kind of public projects as well, um, but he's going to be doing an installation and in, uh, in there's three storefronts below. And we're, we're running out of time, but oh. I just wanted to make sure you let people know where you are. You're next to the sure. Crest Theater. What's your address? We're uh, 1918 Fresno Street. 1918 Fresno and we're, Street. And we're right next to the Crest Theater. You can't really... Um, we're the only ones with a, with a mural on that Only one with a mural. So well, that sounds good. It's hard to miss. Well, thank you very much, Tony. Thank you. For our final segment, let's take a look at the list. It's going to be a busy month, and here are some of the events I'm looking forward to. If you haven't had a chance to catch artist Joan Schultz's show at the Fresno Art Museum, you might think about heading out to her Art in the Afternoon lecture on Thursday afternoon, November 2nd, at the museum. Schultz is, one, is the Council of 100 Distinguished Women Artists for 2017. And you can read my profile of her on MonroeReview.com. Tony, do you ever get a chance to get out to the museum and, and check it out? Yeah, I do, every now and yeah, then. It's mm -hmm. a, it's, I tell people it's, a, it's an important place to, to yeah. go and to, and to support. For sure. um, some people say, oh, it's out in the middle of nowhere. I can't, it's not close to anything. But sometimes you have to make that effort, so. Absolutely. Uh, moving on, the Lively Arts Foundation presents the New York City dance company Ballet Hispanico. This company celebrates and explores the Latino heritage and its multiple Latin cultures through a bold and eclectic brand of contemporary dance. I know that the Lively Arts artistic director, Diane Mosier, has been trying to book this company for several years. So this is a coup for Fresno. The performance is Saturday, November 4th at the Saroyan Theater. Unfortunately, that, I'm sure, Thomas, that, that conflicts with your final that, performance. Yeah. <laughs> but it's nice to see this, 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 yeah. this caliber. All of, happening in Fresno. All happening in Fresno, right. Yeah. The Fresno Philharmonic is back with its second Masterworks concert of the season with Ray Hotada conducting. The guest soloist is pianist Orion Weiss, who's been here before, and he's an incredible player. The orchestra will also be playing the famous Beethoven Fifth Symphony. So if you're not even a classical music fan. You, you, everyone knows that one. So, you can, enjoy so that. You, can, you can head down there for that. There's lots and lots of local theater in November. Fresno City College opens the play Silent Sky, the story of a group of women astronomers on Friday, November 10th. On that same day, the College of the Sequoias in Visalia opens the brazen rock musical Bloody Bloody Andrew Jackson, a local premiere. Good Company Players opens two holiday shows, A Christmas Carol on Thursday, November 2nd at the Second Space Theater, and Breaking Up is Hard to Do, the Neil Sedaka jukebox musical, and that's Thursday, November 16th at Roger Rocca's Dinner Theater. And the next day, on Friday, November 17th, the Selma Arts Center launches its big production of The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Let's give a nod to the Fresno Master Chorale, which will perform what I'm sure will be a poignant concert titled Remembrance and Healing, with one piece about the incarceration of ethnic Japanese in internment camps during World War II. That concert is Sunday, November 19th at the Chagoyan Concert Hall. And finally, our next Broadway in Fresno offering will come through town at the end of the month, the Tony Award winning A Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. It's a very funny and very clever show, which opens Tuesday, November 28th at the Saroyan Theater. And that's a show that uh, probably would never have come to Fresno except for the fact that it won the Tony Award. So, 
Well, that wraps it up for this month's episode of the Monroe Review. A big thank you to our volunteer crew, and thanks again to our guests, Thomas Witt Ellis and Tony Carranza. You both do a lot for the local cultural scene, and we're so glad that you were able to be here. Thank you, Thank Don. you. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. <laughs>